All right, so I'm in this new program called Illustrator, and I've opened up my sketch within Illustrator. And it looks very much like Photoshop, but it is totally different, right? And the whole idea of this sketch, and these are pixels. If I zoom in, I can see the pixels, right? And they're blurry as anything. But Illustrator does not make pixels. Illustrator makes clean cutout vector shapes. But this will be our sketch to build on top of. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of stretch this just like I would transforming in Photoshop, holding down shift to lock its proportions, just so it's big enough. And I have two different logo solutions here. I might as well mock up both of them. Then what I'm going to do is go to where it says layers and I'm gonna double click on it. And I'm gonna click on dim image and I'm gonna set that to 50%. This is called onion skinning. And by setting the image to 50%, it's like putting a piece of tracing paper over it where I can now do my clean vector shapes, refining it. It's like digital inking, which we'll be learning later. Okay, then I can do what's called locking the layer, which we haven't done that much in Photoshop. And I put a padlock right next to the eyeball. And I'm gonna do that a lot in Illustrator, just to organize my work. <laughs> Then, just like in Photoshop, I'm going to create a new layer with the little post-it new layer icon. And on that layer, I will put my vector shapes, and I can even layer it. So I'm going to call this my black vector shape layer, or just black vector shapes. All right, but before we jump into that, let me save it, and I'm going to save it as... This is assignment six. As soon as you have a sketch you want to try to refine, you'll do this. Put my name in, put assignment six, and this is my forking bowl logo. And I'm going to save it as an Adobe Illustrator file, a working format, AI. And I'll, I'll just save it into my assignment six folder right now because I need to clean up my desktop of all that those logo examples. I don't want to lose it on the desktop right now, but usually I would save it to the desktop. And then we always will use all the defaults for saving as a vector format. But right now I haven't created any vectors yet. Right. So let me just show you, if we use the shape tool, this is much like the vector shape tools we used in Photoshop and I just make a rounded rectangle, for instance. I can put that in, and then I can set the properties for it. I can fill that with black, right? Just like we could in Photoshop. But then I could also fill it with nothing, with transparency, but fill its outline with black. Because we're just doing black and white, right? To start with. Ah. There we go. So Illustrator is actually kind of made to be used with a mouse because it's an older program. So here we have a path that has an outline stroke. And look, when I zoom in on that, I never see pixels. Instead, I see the path line and then I see an outline on both sides of it, right? That no matter how much I zoom in and I'll do it on the curve, you'll see there's no pixels involved. Right, it's just always perfectly smooth. And then here I have the same shape but this is what's called a fill instead of an outline, right? And so I see the edge of my path. And when you zoom in with Command Plus, it's always going to go to the center of the selected path. And you can see I don't see any pixels, but I can see that that, that outline vector stroke, that path, and then this is just filled in on the inside. So if I combine them, and if I add an outline to that shape that is black, 
For some reason it made it white. <laughs> it's frustrating. You see how that actually adds to the overall size a little bit. And up here I can increase that stroke size. So I can make that outline bigger or smaller. And then there are stroke properties, like I can make it thick to thin. See how it's thinner there, thicker there? And it gets a lot thicker. And I can change the properties in other ways for the stroke. I can change it from basic to just a lot of different types of brushes. I can load my own. You know, let's say this, for instance. And then it gives me a vector that's this kind of loose, brushy, impressionistic. So there's lots of options. No shortage, right? No shortage of options. So let's just do basic, one point, uniform. And then you can always just turn it off or on. So then the question is, how do I make this shape into my drawing? Right. And so that's what we're going to be learning. So I'm going to save it, just Command S. And now let's learn a little bit about what vectors are. So if we go back to our Canvas course, and we go to our home page, and we go to first day stuff, we are now at the midterm. So this was a long time ago, right? Six weeks ago seven weeks ago, something like that, eight weeks ago now. <laughs> and you go to the Intro to Digital Art Discipline, to these slides. And right before I talk about vector imaging, I include this video by a student, right? Which is vectors versus bitmap imagery. And bitmap's an old name for raster images, for pixel-based images. So I'm just going to play this quick. And you're encouraged to revisit this because this video does it, just introduces it better than, than I would be able to. And it uses a vector-based animation program called Flash to do it. And just as soon as it loads. Bitmaps versus vector graphics. Bitmaps are a collection or an array of bits, which are also known as pixels. Up until now, this is likely the only kind of graphic you've ever heard of. However, there is another. Uh, vector graphics are paths which are plotted through mathematical algorithms. The method of using these algorithms was spearheaded by a man named Pierre Bézier. Pierre was a French engineer, and he had an idea. He came up with a way of using the Castel Jus algorithms to apply an error between two or more points, and those curves could in turn be used for any number of industrial applications. He was a leading influence on how CAD and CAM machines work, and how 3D models are created, and it's all decided. Because vectors are processed in this way, they don't store a finite number of pixels, and can be scaled to an infinite size with no pixelation. This means it can be used for something as small as, say, a stamp, to a package, like a bottle, to a poster, all the way up to a planet-sized building. Okay, that is huge. That is why logos have to be designed as vectors. Because from one file, you can output it at any size, right? So that is the versatility that's so key to logo design. Whoops, didn't want to do that. So I'll jump back to that point. Bit, see, vectors and bit period, but what is alter? No pixelation. This means it can be used for something as small as, say, a stamp, to a package, like a bottle, to a poster, all the way up to a planet sized billboard, and you can do it all from the same file. That single file is also a whole lot less memory than a raster file, right? Because you're not storing individual pixels and individual colors of those pixels. So what does all of this actually mean? Why do we still use bitmaps? 
Is it vector just far superior to raster in every way? Well, it is and it isn't. See, vectors and bitmaps are good at different things. Vectors are good at making clean, simple shapes, which usually use a limited color palette. They're also perfect for images that need to be scaled, either larger or smaller. Bitmaps, on the other hand, are good at details, usually things like color shifts. They're also far better for sub 48 pixel designs like desktop icons. Bitmaps are also how photographs and scans are stored since it's impossible to capture an image as a vector. For example, sometimes you need a complex image. Uh, digital painting. Okay, that's also an important point. <laughs> you can't <laughs> capture a vector image. There is no digital camera you can buy that makes a vector. A vector has to be created by you. <laughs> it's like cutting something out of paper. You have to be incredibly intentional about it. Bitmaps are more smaller. Bitmaps, on the other hand, are good at details. Bitmaps are also good as a vector. In order to bitmaps, because in a bitmap you have full control over each pixel. Vectors can only store a few pieces of information about the contents of a path. One is the stroke or the outline. The second is the fill, which is the color or the color gradient, which is placed inside the path. When you create vector graphics, you're basically accomplishing your goal by doing one of three things, manipulating the stroke, fill, or the shape of the path itself. So you may be asking right about now, if vectors are based on algorithms, does that mean that I have to do math to use them? Well, thanks to Pierre, the answer is no. Manipulating vector shapes is, is easy and completely math-free. There's also brush and pencil tools which can turn natural strokes into the vector shapes. Also, just like in a bitmap program, you can use layers and layer groups with vectors. But these are just the basics, so take time to experiment with these programs and learn for yourself. Okay. So, when we got introduced to vector graphics way in the beginning of the course, I say it is like cutting things out of paper, right? And then layering those pieces of paper on top of each other. We're starting with something that is black and white. And really, we're just starting with a black shape, right? So we're just using one piece of paper, a black piece of paper, and cutting shapes out of it. And then we'll be able to layer multiples on top and then change it from black to other colors, right? But it will be most versatile, most uh, clear, and most engaging if it works as just black shapes to begin with. Now, the other thing we can do is once we layer these shapes and give them color, we can eventually add texture and stuff and fills and gradients and stuff as well on top so you can make full illustrations out of vectors which we will be doing but for logos you don't want it to be a really complicated painting you want it to be a clear symbol so that's what we'll be doing all right so back to illustrator if you remember in photoshop we use the shape tools to build it up so how would we take a shape like this and turn it into your drawing? You would use Command T and transform it, right? You don't really get to do that in the same way in Illustrator, as much as I wish you could, right? Instead, the closest thing you can do is click on the object with one of these two selection tools. You have kind of what I call the large selection tool, which is the black arrow, and the white selection tool, which is the direct selection tool, the small selection tool. The, the, the regular kind of move arrow in Photoshop is like the large selection tool. You can select the whole thing, move it around, and then once it's there, you can also go to object and transform, but you'll see that they're different. You can scale it, but then it gives you these kind of interfaces, which are very different but we can now use scale corners and get a transform box. But you have to kind of set it up that way, right? So I can get it close. It's already a rounded rectangle. And I can right click within it, but I don't have warp. I don't have distort. Instead, I have one called shear. And shear is interesting. Again, you have to kind of play with these interfaces and see what you can get. Right. 
but they are not as user friendly. So why is that? Well, because Illustrator is based more on the direct 